Good morning, everyone. This is Skip Farr from Hardollar. This session, I want to talk about just basic resources and assemblies, a few of the uh, f features and functions that uh, you might not be aware of. So I'm going to use this training job. I'm starting from my start page. So I'm going to go to my training job, but notice I've opened up two registers, one for the resource and one for the assemblies. Now, I'm not going to talk about how to create the resource files and codes and so forth. I you know, assume most of you know how to use that. You can take advantage of some of these tag fields, organizational categories and tag fields, use the defined fields, all different ways of doing, doing things. But sometimes uh, we want to be able to create and change rates very quickly. Say you want to set up some resources. I'll click on my labor here. And I, if I were in the library and I want to create a brand new file, of course I could copy a file description to another file description, then all of a sudden I need to change the rates. So whether I'm inside a job or inside the library, we can change the rates. But sometimes those rates that I want to change may come from, say, Excel. So I can use Excel to generate the rates that I want to use for different period, different area, and so forth. Well, you can always change rates directly here on the labor resource register in this particular case. You can open up your record, you can click on a plus box, you can change the rates. But if you want to do a lot of them at once, this format isn't very convenient. So we created another view here called resource cost details. I'm going to click on that. If you notice now, my column headers aren't talking about file descriptions and tag fields and user defines and organizational categories. They're talking about the rate fields. But since we have so many, seven actually, resource types, our dollar has provided views for each resource type. So for instance, labor view. Well, here's my code, here's my scale, one, two, and three. Here's my fields. So if I want to use Excel or strictly enter in manually myself, it's almost like using a spreadsheet to enter and change rates. So this format can be a lot more clean, a lot easier to use, when especially a lot of rates are being changed. Maybe it was materials you were interested in. Go to my installed material view. Well, there's my materials. So you can change them right here. If you had used Excel, you can copy and paste the information from Excel. So this resource cost details register provides the ability to do some mass changing, a little bit easier to use, and so forth. This is a register. You can create your own views within this if you like. But remember this cost details register. I'm going to close it. I got to it from the resource register, went to view resource cost details. Also, there's another view that we have created for you, and we call it resource utilization. Of course, back to here, I can see that, oh, I've used labor. And there's my count. I'm just sorting. There's how many hours per my LL2, and so forth and so on. So I got a utilization count. This is a summary count. And again, I could create a Excel spreadsheet from this. I can print this out into different file formats. But maybe I want to see a utilization more detailed. So that's why we have this resource utilization view. Again, very similar. It's got the rate fields, but more utilization. And again, we've created different views for each resource type. So again, I'll click on the labor. So not only do I see the labor hours, their total dollars now, but I can see the total base, the total burden. And depending on how much you broke your cost down into, you can see there, here's my fringes, here's my holiday, here's my premium, and so forth. So again, I can print this, send it to Excel, PDF file. So you have a much more detailed utilization view down to the element fields for each resource. I'll click on material. Well, there's my material. 
this case, I'm looking for dollars, but I want to know how much my sales tax is. Here's my fees. That was part of that. So you have that kind of information. So I wanted you to be aware of these two views that we have here, the resource cost details view and the resource utilization. Now, for every resource type but labor, equipment, and rental, we allow you to enter a sales tax. I'll just open up the record here quickly, and there's this option that says apply standard sales tax. Well, the default has this check mark turned on, and this tax rate will come from the cost basis tab of the job properties form. But you can change it. You may, this item maybe is not taxed. Maybe it's a different tax rate. You can make those changes, okay? But also, you can do those changes back here on the register. You want to apply them or not? You want to change it? You can. So sometimes some materials are taxed, sometimes they're not. Sometimes supplies are taxed and your installed materials are not. So you can decide effectively which resource type would, in fact, be taxed. We also have the ability to add fuel costs to a piece of equipment. So I'm going to open up this record. Got this crane that I've opened up and I've expanded this out so I see a cost here called fuel. Well, I use the optional assignment here. If I know the consumption rate, now if, if you're working in liters per hour, that's okay. Whatever fuel type you create, you can create whatever the uh, unit of the measure is. This comes again from the job properties form where you can set up your fuel types and the cost of the fuel. So by selecting the fuel type and knowing its consumption rate, we can calculate the fuel amount for this piece of equipment resource. Of course, if this was important to you, we will generate a report that will itemize the fuel per equipment and summarize the total to let you know how many total gallons or liters of fuel that you may need to purchase for this particular job. So you can get down to that detailed if you so choose. Okay. There's also a couple other things that we do here. Now I'm going to pick on the rented equipment for us. I'll open up, say, this uh, excavator. And again, I'm going to expand this a little bit. We have this area over here. Now, this applies both to the construction equipment and the rental. And what it's really doing is allowing you to come up with a hourly rate that's a function of some other period, like month or year. Because hard dollars, rates for the rented and the construction equipment will be by the hour. So let's look at this situation. Say I need to rent this excavator. And I need to rent it for a month. So I'm going to come down here, click on this. And this tells you what's going on. Basically, we're going to change the rental portion but keep the operating separate so you can still have operating expense in addition to your ownership or rental expense. So I'll say it's okay. And we're going to have four different periods. So again, I'm going to rent this by the month, and it's going to be, say, $10,000 a month. But now, to get the hourly rate, I can decide what the hours per this period I plan on utilizing this piece of equipment, in this case, my excavator. Now, I may know that really I'm only going to be using this thing for, say, two weeks. So I'll put 80 hours here, which calculates a hourly rate, because I have to rent it for the full month, even though I'm going to only know I'm going to utilize it for just two weeks of that monthly period. So by doing this, I'll get the hourly rate. So when I do utilize this in a job, I will get the full return, my $10,000, for that month. So you can change these if you like to. And depending on what period you chose, we would, in the register, let you know how many months or what the period was that would have been utilized. So more specific ways to calculate the rates for your rental and or construction equipment. Now, many times you will add resources inside the job. You need new materials, you need a new equipment or whatever that you didn't have. Or you may change some rates. 
you may have taken some quotes on some materials and you have a new current rate now. We have this ability to copy any of those resource types to the library. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add quickly a new resource here. New material. I'm going to give it a code in new. I'm going to add some rate to it and so forth. So I added something new. I'm going to modify one of one of these just for kicks. I'm going to change this and uh, change this to seven bucks. So, tools, copy job resources to the library. We bring up this screen. We grouped by modified and new. So the two groupings. So I know that in this job, I modified two resources. Here's what was modified. I've added a new one. So if I wanted these to be pushed, copied back up into the master library files, all I got to do is say yes, yes, and click OK. And they will automatically add these in the library for me to these resource files. So it's a quick way when you add new stuff in a job to keep your library master files current. Also while I'm here, if I take in quotes on these materials and made the award, if I click on this button, it will update my master library resources with the new awarded rates so that my rates in the library are more current. So it's a quick way to keep current information in my master library files. Let's go through a resource assembly. Of course, most of you know this is basic crews or assemblies that you can create, just groups of other resources. I'm going to point out one thing that sometimes is overlooked. You can set up a assembly of just material type resources if you want. It doesn't have to be labor and equipment. So for instance, I set up this asphalt material. So this is my mix design essentially. And these quantities are the quantities per ton of mix. So when I utilize this assembly on a cost item that had, say, furnished asphalt materials at a thousand ton, it will calculate these by that thousand because its cost driver is a quantity cost driver. That's really convenient for material type things that are a function of some unit of the measure. Okay? I also have one here that's a combination. I've got some pipe, a little concrete for a thrust block, i got a labor and equipment. Quantity driving driver for the re materials, duration for the labor and equipment. So again, when I employed this particular assembly onto, say, a cost item that had 10 gate valves, that and these would be multiplied by the 10. The labor equipment, I can then decide how fast what the productivity is. So I can develop costs very quickly based on a pre-done assembly for me. Just a few ways to look at resources and assemblies, how they might have an impact for you. Thanks again for listening. This is Skip. Talk to you next time.